Okay, everybody, welcome to Go in 5 Minutes, episode 14. Today we're going to talk about building web pages using the Go Standard Library's HTML template package. Uh, we're going to start by uh, learning a little bit about how to write templates, and then we're going to dive into some code that shows how to render those templates uh, and then pass dynamic data into them so that they can be output to a client. Uh, so let's get right into how to write a template. So as you can see here, this is a template, a Go template. It looks a lot like HTML, but everything inside of those curly braces, the double curly braces, is a directive to tell the Go template engine to do something. So on line one here, we have a template and then a header in quotes. This is essentially just an include. So it tells the Go template engine to go out and find a template called header, which we'll show in a second, and substitute in everything that's in the header template. On line six, we have the same thing with footer. And then we've got some actual logic here on line four. So what this logic is doing is looping over all the data that's represented in this value called dot. Uh, now dot is, as we'll see, it's going to be a map of string to string slice. And what we're doing here is we're assigning all of the keys of the map, all of the strings, to this dollar key variable. And then we're assigning all of the slices that are associated with those strings, those keys, to the dollar value variable. And then later on here, we're substituting in the key variable. We're putting an equal sign. That's just a standard equal sign. Nothing special to the Go template engine about that. And then we're substituting in the value. And the value will be the string slice, which will be printed accordingly by the Go template engine. Now, if we go to header.html, this is where we actually define that header template, which in site.html, we requested to be included. So the header template is defined by this define directive, and it's telling the Go template engine to take everything under the define directive and above the end directive, and that is the data, the HTML, that we will, uh, that we will be substituting into the site.html file. And it's the same thing for the footer. The footer, again, has a define, a bunch of HTML, and then an end. And note that the header and footer can themselves include other templates or have other template logic in them. So now let's go into the code. So we can see in the code here, the main function is fairly straightforward. We see here the most complicated line, and the line that should be, will most likely at least, be at least familiar to you, is line 25. So this is doing quite a few things here. So this is creating, with the template.new function, this is creating a template with no content in it. It's just saying that I want a new in-memory template with nothing inside of it, and I want to call it site.html. The next piece here, the .parse glob call, that is saying I want you, the Go template engine, to go into the templates slash star.html and what that is saying is every, I want you to go in and parse every HTML file in the templates directory. And I want you to take the parsed in-memory version of the template and associate it with this site.html template. Then this whole line inside of the outside parentheses returns a pointer to a template and an error in two separate return variables. This template.must call then checks the error panics if the error is not nil, which of course by panicking will exit out of the program. And if the error is nil, just pass the template straight out to our TPL variable. Now the next two lines here are just straight log functions. There's nothing special about them. And then we have our listen and serve function. Of course, this is the function that runs our HTTP server. And the handler that we're passing in for the listen and serve is called HDL. We're passing that template into the HDL. So let's go up and see how that works. So the HDL function here, of course, it takes in the template, returns an HTTP handler. And this is a uh, pattern we've seen before. The HTTP handler we're returning really only does one thing. It calls the template's execute function. The execute function takes in an io.writer as the first argument. And since HTTP.responseWriter implements io.writer, we can pass it here. And then the second function is the data. And of course, as I mentioned before at the beginning when I showed the site.html file, the data that the site.html file expects is a map of string to string slice. And that, in turn, is what r.url.query returns. So that's it for the code. Let's see this in action. I'm going to build and run it. 
There's the build and now it's running. And we'll go to this URL and we'll see how it all works. So here's that header in action. This is the include. And of course there's an include as well for the footer. This is the static HTML and this is the dynamic data. So if you compare this to what you see in the query string, you can see A equals B and C, and that's why there's a B and C in this list. And C equals D, you can see that as the second element in the list, and D equals E, that's the third element in the list. So let's add a fourth element to make sure this is actually dynamic. And there you have it. So F equals G, that's added to the list uh, as well on every page reload. So that's it for uh, the basics on templates. Uh, I wanted to mention one more thing before I sign off, and I'll go a little bit over time on this. Um, this, as always, is the basics on templates, and it should be able to get you up and running pretty quickly, and know a little bit about the basics. Uh, I'm starting a new program called Extended Screencasts, and Extended Screencasts will go far into far more detail uh, about, in this case, the HTML template package. So it'll show you things about uh, things like best practices on how to structure your templates, how to use external packages to uh, more efficiently and easily manage large number of templates, and how to use more advanced features inside of the template library. So head on over to goin5minutes.com, uh, navigate to episode 14, uh, and check out how to get that extended screencast. I uh, hope you do that, um, but either way, I hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot.